This is Abe Pretanzer from Awards Radar, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Molly Ephraim about her role in A League of Their Own. How are you, Molly? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Can you tell me what your relationship is with the original film? My relationship is that it's a great film. I I was one of those kids that sort of m- missed out on a lot of the um, uh, iconic 80s and 90s films. So I have revisited them or been introduced to them as an adult. Um, so I'm not sure exactly when I saw the film. I, I did work with Eddie Mecca uh, at the Box County Playhouse in a production of Fiddler on the Roof when I was probably seven, eight. And um, he is the guy who dances with Madonna in the swing dancing scene. So I, from a young age, was like, wow, that is, that is, uh, I mean, the, the pinnacle of, um, of fame and, I mean, to dance with Madonna. And now I'm, <laughs> I'm in the remake. Would you consider yourself a fan of sports and baseball in general? Yeah. I mean, well, I'm a fan of um, ballpark food. I, I I love a hot dog and a cold beer. And as it turns out, Maybell Blair, who my character Maybell Fox is based on, also loves hot dogs and beer. I just asked her the other day, actually, like what her secret is, because she's 95 and is in tremendous shape and so sharp. And she said, actually, I hate drinking water. I only drink beer. And I was like, I I don't know what else you could ask for. Just permission to uh, to lean into that. Can you tell me more about Blair and what you found out about her? I mean, she's she is an incredible woman. Um, I'm sure you've maybe seen out and about. She recently has come out um, for the first time at 95 years old. Also asked me to find her a girlfriend. So we'll work on that. <laughs> Um, I think, I think it's, uh, it's so exciting for her to be a part of this show and to see, um, you know, the culmination of her life's work to try to get the word out about women's baseball, um, and see that there are so many, uh, there's so many performances. I'm not playing someone who's queer in the show, but there are a lot of women who are clear are queer in the show and, um, in real life who were a part of the making of, of the show. And to have those stories be told, um, I think is so vital and important and exciting for her to get to see. Of course. So where did you sort of depart from her and then create Maybelle as somebody different? I mean, the, the character um, description said, Maybelle, the spunkiest person you'll ever meet. And that is her. Um, I think I think we bring that out in each other when we're hanging out. Um, again, I, I saw her over the weekend and it was a hundred bazillion degrees out and she was wearing a turtleneck, you know, the whole deal she's done up. I said, girl, why you got this turtleneck on? She said, oh, I don't want them to see my turkey neck. Um, she's just, she's just plain cool. <laughs> I uh, I think I'd like to think that I, I brought a little bit of her sass and um, no nonsense kind of isms, but she also just is everybody's friend. She she doesn't seem like she's going to pick a fight with anybody unless you, you know, get her way on the field. I know you've done a lot of theater and then also recently some other period pieces. What was it like, uh, you know, being a part of this era on screen with the costumes and sets and everything? I guess I've never done 40s. I've done um, 30s and some 20s-ish, I think. Um, it was great. It was fantastic. I also was roughly from five to about eight months pregnant while we were shooting. Um, so that presented a whole slew of other challenges for costumes for me for everybody really (laughs) but um but luckily you know they they kind of made me a bunch of skirts and blouses with an elastic waistband that just kept going higher 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 um and I would always feel my my kid kicking up against the waistband she did not 
did not like the elastics there, but. Are there any actresses or actors in the cast that you particularly enjoyed sharing scenes with? All of the peaches are absolutely amazing. I mean, when you get us all together in, in team scenes, um, everybody in their uniform, in the dugout or uh, in the locker room, it was such a gift to be around such funny, vivacious, crazy people <laughs> all the time and be laughing all the time and feel like, oh, my daughter is getting a lot of like laughter in utero. She's hearing me. She's hearing the people around me. Um, they're just, they're amazing. I've never worked with a cast of this many women. I've never worked on a show with this many women, people of color, queer people, front of the camera, behind the camera. Um, it's great. It's, it's exactly what you think it would be. I mean, it really sets the tone. Um, and, and it's just a very nurturing place to be. I think the show is great. And I think it's definitely a modern update, even though the story is still set in the same time. How do you right. think fans of the original film will react to the way the story has and the characters have changed? I think, look, the only, <laughs> I may get in trouble for saying this. I think the only people who are going to be actively disappointed are the same people who think that there can't be female Ghostbusters because Ghostbusters are only men. I, I think, I think generally people will be really excited and find it, um, and, and find that the depth that these characters were given very thoughtfully done. I mean, this is not sort of a zeitgeisty take on what is it like to be queer. Uh, this is telling those real stories. Uh, as Maybell said, I think something like 80% of the league um, were, were gay. I don't know if that's a real number or not from her assessment, but the original movie did not get into what that was like for these women. Um, and beyond that, the original movie doesn't have any black people in it, um, really, with the exception of one gal throwing a pitch. Um, so I think, I think there is depth and reality and um, also a great deal of humor that, that people will be really excited to see. Yeah, I agree. I know you were also part of another uh, period show that I really liked that I hope season two is coming sometime soon, and that's Perry Good. Mason. Um, can you talk about working with Juliette Rylance and just being part of that show? Um, she's just, what can you say? I mean, she's got it in her blood, but she she is such a professional and such a giving actor. I mean, I was not there every day. I'm coming in and out to sort of do my scenes and pop and pop out. And I think it, it feels rare sometimes when you come from a theater background and you step into TV and film to work with an actor, especially if you're not working with them every day, to feel like you really are having that relationship and you really are working with somebody who wants to bring out the best in you, even when it's not their coverage. Um, she is, she's amazing. And she's so beautiful in the show and, and again, I mean, it's, it's telling the story of a queer woman in a particular time period and all of the things that that entails. Um, yeah, it's, it was such a treat to, to work with, with everyone there. You were also part of Angeline, which is something I think completely different. What was that experience like? <laughs> that was like playing actors bingo. Um, I've never, <laughs> like, you know, let me get to play myself at, you know, mid sixties. So to the whole face mask goo. And I was thinking, boy, like I've played a dead body on law and order and now I get to do this. I am just knocking off those sort of uh, check mark um, experiences. No, it was, it was such a treat. Um, Emmy is spectacular in it. Um, Lucy, the director was so amazing to work with and so collaborative. Um, yeah, I mean, it really runs the gamut. I get to play this character from 16 to 65-ish, let's say. 
um, flipping a table. I didn't think I would get to flip a table. I, you know, there's not a lot of roles out there for women of a certain age to, to go that far. Um, so I loved the, the sort of heightened, um, very theatrical aspects of it. Uh, I also got to shoot that while super duper pregnant. So the scene where my character is pregnant in the parking lot, my kid was there in tow with me, <laughs> um, which is fantastic too, because I'm, I'm just so, uh, I'm so grateful that I got to work so much um, with, with her. That's great. Do you have anything yeah. else coming up that you'd like to share? Not to my knowledge. If you find out what I'm doing next, that would be great. I mean, well, I think we're all hoping for a second season. That would be really, really tremendous. Um, and I did ask little Maybell, like, all right, listen, I couldn't do all of the baseball scenes that maybe we thought I was going to, I couldn't slide in a home, even though I would have tried, you know, what do you want me to do? How can we look really good in season two? And she's like, I don't know, but I'm going to whip you in a shape. So I'm, um, I'm hoping for some one-on-one -on -one <laughs> a, la, a la Rocky, um, you know, sports training with, with Ms. Maybell. Sounds great. Thank you so much for taking some time to uh, speak with me and hope we'll do it again for season two. Thank you. Great to meet you. Too.